Uh, good morning. Um, my name is Glenn Brand. I'm the Sierra Club Maine Chapter Director. Uh, we are here today to send a clear message that Mainers are counting on Senator Susan Collins and, and Senator Angus King to lead the fight against Donald Trump's climate-denying uh, pro-fossil fuel cabinet nominations. Uh, during the Obama administration, uh, we made important strides in addressing climate disruption and transitioning away from dirty fossil fuels to clean renewable energy. But this progress will be undermined if the Senate approves climate deniers and fossil fuel interests to run the most important federal departments charged with protecting our environment. Uh, Oklahoma State, uh, Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt for the EPA, Exxon CEO Rex Tillerson as Secretary of State, and Rick Perry to run the Energy Department. Uh, for years, Scott Pruitt has led the legal charge to kill the EPA's historic clean power plan and other important environmental safeguards like stronger standards on toxic mercury. And he has regularly conspired with the fossil fuel industry to attack EPA protections. Uh, make no mistake about it, Scott Pruitt is an unabashed climate science denier. Uh, despite the overwhelming scientific consensus, um, as recently as last May, Scott Pruitt said, falsely said that, quote, that debate is far from settled. Scientists continue to disagree about the degree and extent of global warming and its connection to the actions of mankind, end quote. Uh, no person who denies the overwhelming scientific consensus on the human role in driving the climate crisis is fit to serve as the head of the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, as Secretary of State, uh, ExxonMobil CEO Rex Tillerson would literally put the most powerful private fossil fuel corporate interest in charge of our nation's foreign policy. Uh, for many years, ExxonMobil was the driving force and a major funding, uh, funding source supporting climate denialism and its propagandists. And in an absurd irony, Trump has nominated another denier of climate science, former Texas Governor Rick Perry, to lead the very department that Perry pledged to eliminate when he was a presidential candidate. Uh, the stakes are very, very high for Mainers, all Americans, and in fact the entire world. According to the scientific community, we must dramatically reduce carbon pollution in the next generation to close to zero to avoid the worst impacts of climate disruption on future generations. Uh, Senator Susan Collins' role as one of the only Republican senators who supports taking action to protect our climate has never been more important. Mainers are counting on her and Senator Angus King not only to vote no on Trump's fossil fuel cabinet, but also to lead the fight against these unfit nominees. Um, our next speaker, our first speaker really, is Professor Charles Tilburg, the Associate Dean of College and College of Arts and Sciences and a professor of the Department of Marine Scientists at the University of New England in Biddeford. Professor Tilburg. Thank you. So, as Glenn said, my name is Charles Tilburg and I'm a physical oceanographer which means that I study how the ocean moves and changes, interacts with the atmosphere, and most importantly today, transports and stores heat. I've studied the ocean for the last 20 years. However, I'm not asking you to take only my word for what I'm about to say. I stand here before you as a representative scientist throughout the United States and the world. While my views do not represent the official stance of the University of New England, I would like to join with the majority of climate scientists to emphatically state that climate change is real. The Earth is warming at unprecedented rates. The 10 hottest years on record have happened since 1998, and 2016 is on track to be the hottest of them all. Earlier this year, NASA, the National Atmospheric and Space Administration, declared that July 2016 was the hottest month in recorded history. However, July's stay at the top was short-lived, for August of 2016 soon matched that record. Droughts, heat waves, and wildfires have increased in the Western United States. But here, closer to home, the Northeast has experienced a dramatic increase in the number of heaviest rainfall since 1950. Floods have threatened our homes and our coastal regions. The ocean temperatures in the Gulf of Maine are warming at a greater rate than 99% of the world's oceans. This warming has affected the Gulf's, Gulf of Maine's beautiful and productive but extremely fragile ecosystem. Populations of fish and other seafood have shifted to, due to these changes, affecting our fishermen and our economy. Warming waters of the Gulf of Maine will most likely continue to reduce the populations of cod and northern shrimp to the economies that we depend so, uh, so much on. 
Rising sea level will result in more coastal flooding. Ocean acidification will result in greater losses in shellfish. Some of the best scientists in the state of Maine, the United States, and throughout the world have looked into the past climate. They've studied data showing the present warming, and they've created accurate computer models that have helped us understand how the climate works. Over the last few decades, through exhaustive study, discussion, analysis, scientists, a typically careful lot, have concluded that man is changing our climate. This is not a question of scientists believing or not believing in climate change. Instead, we scientists understand the facts as determined by the scientific process. Climate change is happening. In fact, there's almost an unprecedented consensus on the issue within the scientific community. One study has 97% of those scientists who study the climate agree that the Earth is warming due to man-made greenhouse gas emissions. Such different societies as the American Geophysical Union, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, and the National Academy of Sciences, home to numerous uh, Nobel Prize winning scientists, have all affirmed that we have warmed the planet. The underlying causes of climate change are no longer debated within the scientific community. We've moved beyond this settled issue to examine the effects of the change on our environment. So we as a nation must stop arguing about whether climate change is happening, it is, and start discussion on what to do about it. The cost of ignoring climate change will be frighteningly high. And I want to give you this one particular example. If we continue along our present pathway, we can expect that the mean global temperature will have increased by 4 degrees Celsius, or 7 degrees Fahrenheit, by the year 2100. Now that may not sound like that much until you realize that a four degrees Celsius difference in temperature is about the same difference between now and the last ice age when there's more than a half mile of ice where Boston stands. Thank you, Professor Tilburg. Uh, next speaker is Sarah Lachance uh, with 350 May. Thank you. So we've heard from Glenn Brand a lot about who these nominees are and why we need to be concerned about them. And then we just heard from Dr. Charles Tilburg explaining the science, which is undeniable, completely consensus-based across the scientific community worldwide. And to, right now, I just want to take a few moments to remind us of who Senator Collins is and why she's so important today and why across the state she's going to be visited by hundreds of us from here in Maine asking her to do the right thing regarding these nominees. So Senator Collins has a long history of defending our climate and speaking up against it down in Washington. Yes, there's many of us here in Maine that have wished she has taken stronger action and we're going to be calling on her to do so. But she has been a voice amongst the Republican Party to remind us all that that climate science is clear and that we need to take action now. And so now we need her leadership more than ever. Who's about to be appointed, um, if she doesn't take a strong leadership role, is nothing but a pack full of fossil fuel industry funded leaders and puppets. And we cannot afford to have that happen. She has always been about protecting the health and safety of every American. And she values um, what's right for Americans. The folks that are in this um, pick of cabinet members care nothing about that and only about furthering the agenda of the oil and gas industry. I want to remind um, Senator Collins that earlier she spoke proudly about her s support for several different grants that help innovation move forward here in the state of Maine. She was proud to support an innovative grant that came out of the Department of Energy, Energy for the Ocean Renewable Power Company, who's up in Down East Maine right now moving forward tidal energy. She's also a proud supporter, supporter of an innovative grant that works with University of Maine folks that are leading the way in offshore wind power development. What will happen to the Department of Energy when we nominate uh, Rick Perry for Secretary of Energy. What will happen with these opportunities for these funds? They will disappear. Maine will no longer be a leader in these innovation um, opportunities. I also want to remind you, Senator Collins, that earlier this year, or rather just a few short months ago at the end of 2016, you were up at Bowdoin College and you spoke to a packed room of college students. And while you were there, you reminded them that you were a climate change leader. Your exact words were that you have voted repeatedly 
to do away with tax breaks for the large oil companies of the country, and that you have supported over and over again the ability of the EPA to advance greenhouse gas emissions policies. For example, you've supported over and over again the Clean Power Act and came out very strongly for this legislation. What will happen if you allowed someone like Scott Pruitt to take over to the EPA? You cannot stand in front of a crowded room of tomorrow's future. Our students up at Bowdoin College or students across the nation that are looking for your leadership and tell them that you understand what's at stake, that you have once again, time and time again rather, supported um, things like the Clean Power Act and then turn around and support someone like Scott Pruitt. You cannot do both of those things. You have a clear decision to make. You either stand with the fossil fuel industry or you stand with the people. And we are calling on you today, tomorrow, next week, next month, during these next four years to do what's right. You have a huge opportunity as a leader down in Washington within the Republican Party to show that the Republicans care about climate. These fossil fuel lobbyists that are about to be in the cabinet do not. But the people that elect you and elect other Republicans, the vast majority of them understand what's at stake. So show us now, loud and clear, that you put what's at stake, you put what's most important first, and that's the people of Maine. Thank you.